Hi, I'm Ian Hartman, Solution Architect for Western Computer. And I know this sounds too good to be true, but in this episode of Product Configurator, I'm going to set up business rules and constraints, define what users can see and will see, and when they will see it. Furthermore, I'll show you how to dynamically change the look and behavior based on the values that the end user selects, all without the use of a condition. Let's take a look. So in our prior two episodes, or better yet, in part two of the series, I showed you how to work with product models. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to write business rules, and I'm going to do it by going into the same item I used earlier. So let's go over to, we're actually in the right area, product information, product configuration models, which is what I talked about in episode number two. So we've been using this high-end speaker. Let's go back in here. and. This editor is very, very powerful. Its function is to write code for you and then check the syntax in case you make an error. So we're going to use assembly runtime in this example. And what I want to do is we're not going to talk about the actual assembly runtime because it's something I'm going to take care of in part four, the next episode where I talk about calculations. What I'm actually trying to show you here is a very easy use of the expression editor. And I'm going to take this hidden modifier and I'm going to say that I want to hide the assembly runtime based on a condition. Notice how this is grayed out. Mandatory works the same way. There's conditions as are read only. So I can put in sort of if type statements to say, when do I want to hide or when do I want to make this mandatory? So the editor comes with all these different conditions less than equal to and or not. There's all this stuff here, min, max, and then all the other pieces of the puzzle. These are actually attributes, these cabinet finishes. They're found right over here on the attribute tab. So we're gonna hide the assembly runtime when the cabinet finish, system brings it in there. Notice there's no more. There can only be one attribute. So now I go over to operators. I have equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to. I wanna pick equals. So the system puts in that double equal sign. By the way, I can type all this by hand. The system's still going to use what I do and validate. So in this case, I want to hide the assembly runtime again if the condition is the cabinet is equal to oak. So let's go ahead and validate that. The system will go out and take about a minute or so, validate what is actually happening. If there are errors, it'll display in here and what those errors are. And as you can see, there are no errors. So we're going to back out of this. We're going to click on OK. And, and let's go back over to the model. And we're going to test. I talked about all this in prior videos as well. So what we're doing now is we're testing the code that I wrote. And if you remember, I said if the cabinet finish equals oak. So if it's rosewood, notice that the assembly runtime is here. It's mandatory. I didn't set it up as mandatory. It's mandatory for a different reason. We'll talk about that in the next video. If, however, I pick oak, it's gone. Okay, so that's how the code basically is going to work. Sorry. Okay. Now, what happens if I change this here? And I don't have to go into the editor to change it, but I will, because I want to show you that if I remove an equal sign and I go ahead and validate it, if you remember, there's no operator for just equal. It's a double equal sign. So it's coming back and it's saying the attribute for the speaker with oak in position 14 is not right. So if you count the characters, it's telling me there's an error over here. So let's get out of that and we will reset that to be right. I'll just type in another equal sign. We'll revalidate. Now remember I typed it in manually here. I didn't pick it from the list. And no errors are found. Perfect. So we'll get out of here. We'll click OK. And of course, there's no reason to test. So I'm going to remove this hidden modifier. Notice the condition goes away. Now the expressions can be used. I'm going to show you constraints shortly, and we'll talk about calculations later. But they can be used for subcomponents. They can be used for requirements, for bomb lines, and for route operations. So we're going to look at all this at a later point in time. It's going to be in our next video. But if we continue right now, let's look at expressions and constraints. So I'm just going to hide the attributes for a moment. 
let's go ahead and hide the calculation beside the subcomponents because we're only going to be working right now with the constraints, hide bomb lines, hide route operators, hide user requirements. Okay, so in the prior video, we had talked about this color and finish, and that's called a table constraint. Now, a table constraint is, is a master table. So if I come over here to table constraints, table constraints are used across multiple models. Yes, let me back out. I came here from this high-end speaker model and I went to table constraints. Now in the table constraints, there's a definition behind this. So if I look at the definition, it tells me that it's based on color and finish. So these are the two variables that can go in there. Now, what are the content combinations I'm putting together? Well, I'm saying oak finish can go with a black grill. Rosewood goes with white, but a white cabinet finish can have a black or a white grill. So let's go ahead and test that and see how that's going to work. Let me open that up again, edit content. Let me go back and create a duplicate tab here. So we just have this open. We'll go in over here. And we're going to test this. So what I'm testing now is oak and black and then white. So oak should only show black. So if I pick a cabinet finish here that says oak, black is the only grill that's available. White and metal are grayed out. And then you'll notice show feasible only. If you have massive lists and you only want to see those that are feasible and you don't ever want to display the others that don't match the criteria, you can certainly turn on this box. Now, I also showed you that white is available in two flavors. It's available with two grills, black and white. So that's how that constraint works. Let's also look at something called an expression constraint. Now, in this case, I'm trying to tell the system, I'm gonna write the expression. So let's go edit this. This is not a table constraint. This is an actual expression that I'm writing using the editor again. And here I'm saying that I picked under attributes, well, it's open here. So what I picked was the front grill. If the front grill is not equal to metal, then corner protection is not available. So if it is metal, corner protection is available on the front grill. So let's see how that looks. Let's go OK. And let's go ahead and test that. So again, if it's metal on the front grill, let's just choose black, which goes with metal. Corner protection is now available or not available. If, however, I choose something in, I can't choose white for black. Let's go ahead and choose white and we will choose white. And now it comes back as false and I don't have the ability to pick true. So that variable that I wrote was saying that if the front grill is not metal, let's set the corner protection attribute to false. Okay, let's back out of here. So while we were looking at the expression of table constraints, I went ahead and set up two new attributes and associated them for a particular reason. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is how table constraints are not just used for expressions, but they're also used for system type tables, meaning we can pick from any table in the system. So let's go over to table constraints. This one's called add on item, but really quickly, I'm gonna show you something. It runs through a wizard. I'll just call this uh, accessory, it doesn't need that. I'm gonna pick system and notice how this opened up. So when I come in over here, the system allows me to pick from any table. So I'm gonna pick from invent item group item. I just happen to know it, okay? You don't have to know this. Now the wizard says, okay, I got your table. I know what table you're using. So let's go ahead and tell me what fields do you want to use? So I'll call this one item field name. I pick from the list, the item ID, pick okay. And the attribute type needs to be one of the attributes that's found in the system. And in this case, if you remember, I had created one called item. And I can do the same thing over here for the item group. Grupo. <laughs> so we're gonna pick the item group ID and the attribute type is item group. 
and that's that, and I click next, and that's it. That table constraint has now been added. I can then add to it a query. So if I want, I can select the query here and start putting things on. This is what I put on my query. It says, I want to pick any item, starts with an A or a C or a T. Now the reason I'm doing this, again, is because what I want to have happen here, I'm going to delete this for a minute because it's just to show you. What I really want to use is this add-on item, right? And it's got the same stuff that I set up and if I show you the query is exactly the same. Now, I set it up this way for a reason. The reason is when I add this add-on item, I don't even have to add a line to the sales order. I don't have to pick the item from the list. I can use this product configurator to build up this accessory item. So I said it's items that start with A or C or T. The reason I put an item group is to show you that if I pick something that is in an item group audio versus an item group raw material, you're gonna see different items. And if I pick an item group that has nothing in it, you'll see no items. And remember how I showed you the use of during testing, which we're going to do right now, the use of this show only feasible. So I'm going to turn that on. Now the system has mandatory these fields. Again, remember that if the front grill was metal, this would give me an option, but because the front grill is not metal, I don't have any options. And I'll pick a speaker height. It doesn't matter. Now here are the items that are available, the A's, the C's, and the T's. If I were to pick an item group, call it audio, now these are the only items that are available to me. If I were to pick a different item group called, let's go to raw material down here, for example, then these are the items that are associated with it. So it's very, very flexible. And what the system's gonna do is, it's gonna use this to build up the bomb. So when you come back for part four, and that's coming up next, I'm going to show you how the expression editor can be used to configure calculations. Let's just cancel that. So calculations are here. And we're going to look at bomb lines and routing operations and some other things like subcomponents. So come on back for episode four.